AM and FM synthesis, or amplitude modulation and frequency modulation synthesis, are two relatively similar techniques uh, in that are used to synthesize complex sounds using usually only two oscillators. Uh, let's start with uh, AM or amplitude modulation. So we'll have what's called a carrier and a modulator. And the modulator will modulate or change the amplitude of the carrier. So first thing, we'll have our uh, carrier frequency. Let's just give it a default argument of A. Multiplication tilde to control the amplitude of this frequency. And this amplitude will be controlled with a uh, another sine wave. In this case, We'll start it off as a low frequency oscillator, but of course we can change that frequency. Now, as you know, this cycle oscillates between negative one and one. That's the amplitude range of the cycle tilde object. Uh, and this will take the absolute value of that. So what happens over the course of this entire cycle is when it goes up to one, this amplitude will go up to one and then back to zero. When this goes to negative one, the amplitude will take, this will take the absolute value of that and it'll go back up to one. Uh, and what we'll hear is an amplitude modulation that occurs twice per second. Again, because the cycle tilde produces negative numbers, and this is interpreting that as absolute values. And here we'll perceive a sine wave that is oscillating. Uh, the pitch is determined by the carrier frequency. And then the rate of modulation is determined by the modulator. Now what we looked at briefly in class is when the modulator approaches the audible range, then it uh, produces what are called sidebands, which is the sum and the difference between these two frequencies. Uh, I'll explain this in a little bit more detail in just a second. Let's rescale our spectroscope. So as you can see, um, when the modulator goes up, the sum and the different tones go in opposite directions. Um, so hypothetically, if we have a carrier of 440 and a modulator of 220, the two resulting tones are the sum, so 660, and the difference, 220. And that's why they always move in opposite directions. Now, if the modulator is higher than the carrier, again, this takes the absolute value. So rather than going into a negative frequency right here, it folds over and goes back as a high frequency. Okay, just something to be aware of. Um, in class, we looked at also adding an amplitude envelope. Uh, this is the same technique that we saw with the additive synthesis. So we'll have a function, a set domain. This will determine the duration of the envelope. <coughs> a button to trigger, line tilde. Remember to use the line tilde object, not the line, out of the second outlet. Um, and then we'll just have a second multiplication tilde object. And of course now this is uh, something like a... Uh, a little synthesizer that you can use to create uh, some interesting timbres and bell tones. Um, you can apply all the same functionality that we've been discussing. Um, I'll let you sort of experiment, uh, experiment and dig into that as much as you like, um, but I'd like to take a quick look at frequency modulation synthesis. And in this case, the structure is a little bit different. We're going to we again have a carrier, 
a modulator. But this time, the modulator is modulating the frequency of the carrier, not the amplitude. So we're going to have a pitch that goes up and down rather than an amplitude that goes up and down. Um, so we have our frequency. And in order to modulate that, we're going to be adding uh, the value of our modulator to that. What this will do is instead of the amplitude sort of going up and down, uh, it's going to be shifting the pitch up and down. It'll make sense in just a second. Then we'll have a, this is our carrier oscillator. This is the pitch that we're going to hear. And um, gain to an easy deck. Now, the key here, again, is having an oscillator that is going to modulate this pitch. So it'll be having to add and subtract to this pitch. Right now, we're not adding or subtracting anything. So all we're hearing is 220. But what we want here is essentially adding and subtracting around a range so it can go 220 up to whatever value and then below whatever value. We want that to be controlled with an oscillator. Um, so we'll have our, this is our modulation rate right here. This will control a modulation frequency. We will multiply that by a value, and that value will be the modulation depth. This will make sense in a second. And then this will be what is used to modulate the carrier frequency. So the logic here is that um, when this sine wave starts generating values, if you multiply it by 1, it's just going to go between negative 1 and 1. And essentially that negative 1 and 1 is adding and subtracting from this carrier frequency. So we're going to get a frequency modulation that is only 1 hertz. It's not really perceptible. If we raise the pitch here, we might hear it a little more clearly. You can't really perceive this modulation because it's so small. Um, so our mod depth is how many hertz above and below the carrier we're going to be modulating. So if we make this 20, you see there's a little bit of modulation. Now it's going up to 460 and down to 420 once a second. Right? If you make this bigger, it basically controls the range of the glissando, in other words. Um, and our modulation rate controls how, how often this occurs. And just like the amplitude modulation, when you get near the audible range, then you can get side bands. In this case, there are multiple sidebands. So with AM synthesis, we get two sidebands, the sum and the difference between these. Um, because our modulation depth now is another variable, we can control uh, multiple different sidebands. And it's essentially the sum and difference between these and then the sum and difference of their overtones. Um, this this technique, FM synthesis, was invented by John Channing in the late 60s, and it's a way of generating very complex tones. Look at all these overtones. Uh, in this case, with only two oscillators. So it's a very computationally inexpensive way of uh, creating complex, complex synthesized tones. And then, of course, we can have our amplitude envelope. These tend to sound a little bit like bell tones or something like that. So I would encourage you to play around with these. 
see that. Very cool. Uh, the finally, the last thing we looked at in class was an alternative. Uh, rather than using the uh, preset object, which can cause some problems when you have a complex patch, we were using uh, sends and receives. So S and R in order to trigger certain events. So, and I highly recommend color coding these. So once you have, um, um, once you know which parameters or which variables you want to use, you can create sends and receives to control them wirelessly. And here we can control our carrier, our modulator. And again, I really do recommend uh, color coding so that you know exactly which one of these are connected. This is our mod rate. And then of course our mod depth. We can just say depth. Variables are entirely up to you, which which variables you choose. Um, but um, there are two advantages. One is it's much more efficient, uh, much cleaner uh, to control these values. You don't have to necessarily have patch cords. You can have essentially a little control center where you control everything. Uh, here on the left, you don't have to have patch cords crisscrossing your whole patch. Uh, but the other advantage, something that we, uh, and we, we could of course have a, have a, a bang right here to trigger the envelope. Um, the big advantage here is we can create messages by using a semicolon we're telling the message to communicate with these sends and receives and then using the arguments that you wrote carrier depth mod and bang we can send these values so depth of 120 mod of 37 bang we want to send a bang And by clicking on this, it sends these messages. Um, and I think it sends them from bottom to top. So we have carrier at the top here. And then the bang at the bottom. Uh, let's double check which order, the order of operations here. Oh, no. Interesting. It goes from top to bottom. So it'll send out first the carrier, then the depth, then the modulator, and finally the bang. That's good to know. Um, these can of course be used to essentially kind of as a preset object that is highly customizable. Um, and you can put whichever values you find interesting and, and you like here. Um, You can have another variable here for the domain if you like. You can use a preset object to have different envelopes that you trigger. Um, and then we can often trigger these using just the number pad by connecting a select object. So when select receives a one, it'll send a bang out of its first outlet. When it receives a two, it'll send a bang out of its second outlet. And now with just the number pad, you can trigger these and make them very customized, as customized as you like. Um, anyway, let me know if you have any questions and uh, take a little bit of time to explore all of these variables. Thank you.